Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, I am the CEO of a luxury skincare and perfume company. And my love affair with the beauty industry began back in the 80s when I worked for a global advertising agency. I have, I admit, been on the other side of that invisible mirror, studying our beauty belly in focus groups, and our driven compulsion to conform to a beauty standard that keeps raising the bar relentlessly. And I'm tired of being a rat on a beauty wheel. So I'm here to start a revolution, the gorgeous revolution. To get off the beauty grid now, to swim the other way, to liberate our thighs, our bellies and our brows. <laughs> Recently, the dam burst for me with some urgency and I sat in a hotel room and I wrote a book, 30,000 words in three days. And chapter 11 goes something like this. As women, we want to look beautiful. We have made our survival depend on it. Every magazine displays page after page of gorgeous women. I know, all airbrushed to the hilt, but we don't care. Following the holy grail, list, following the holy grail we stand, a glistening credit card in hand. We worship at the temple of department store hush and listen attentively to the lovely lady in the white coat for our, for, to honour the hope in the white gilded jar. For our job is to conform, to shine, to raise those lines, to lather that cream, to present our best selves as never before. For we must look lovely. We have to whiten that smile, straighten those teeth and poof that hair. We have to boost that cleavage, smooth those lines and plump those lips. We have to laser those hands, tighten that neck, fill those cracks, lift those eyelids, paralyze that brow, peel that skin and look lovely. We have to gel those nails, we have to bleach those curls, we have to cover those nasty greys and we have to wax that unwanted hair. <laughs> we have to liposuction those thighs, we have to liposuction those thighs, we have to, oh, stopped for a minute, okay. Have to liposuction those thighs, we have to sculpt those arms. This is how much, it, you know, I mean, how involved is this? We have to sculpt those arms. We have to firm those buttocks. We have to flatten that stomach. We have to find that core, lengthen that stride. Oh, yeah, and that's right, look lovely. <laughs> we agonise over our teenagers. We referee toxic family arguments. We pray our kids don't get beaten up at school. We pray even harder that no one will know and look lovely. We must be moist and never ready. Meditate like a monk and have sex like a goddess. <laughs> Smart, ambitious, together and informed, connected and on top. Facebook status ticked, iPad savvy, internet driven. But we must be there for little children. Sport a designer bag, cook like a chef and jog with an iPod. Oh, and look lovely. <laughs> I don't know whether to laugh or cry having said all that, but Houston, we have a problem. Our world is dying and we dye our hair. Our earth is hurting, animals disappearing, our oceans are polluted, and we hate our thighs. Prisons are full, wars are raging, teens are suiciding, and we laser our lines. Women are raped, old people homeless, forests destroyed, and we don't like our breasts. Children are hungry, nations malnourished, and we're starting our next diet on Monday. Does something, anything not make sense here because we're chained to our credit cards? We have lost sight. We have become blind to what matters, to life itself, to who we really are. And we're compelled to compete in a world of never-ending, patent-pending, anti-wrinkle claims. Because it's fun, isn't it? Otherwise, we'd be letting ourselves go. <laughs> letting ourselves down. Letting team woman down and we wouldn't be special, accepted, or worthy of love and attention anymore. <laughs> so we're hooked. The beauty world is happy. The lipstick sold, the breasts augmented, and the toes shiny red. Thank you, chapter 11. So when I was a little girl, when I was 10, I was a really happy, exuberant 10-year-old, my dad, oh yes, with two chins, my dad who said to me, well, it'd be great when you lose your puppy fat. So I started a diet the very next day, and that diet lasted for 23 years. 
For 23 years, I ate with measured martyrdom, guilt and shame when I slipped. And I never really tasted nor savoured food again. I wasn't like it. Nobody really knew I was on a diet because like, I wasn't really overweight. But I was just like ever vigilant and ever in control. And many years later, some really bright spark said to me, Dee, you're going to have to learn to love yourself. And I had no idea what that meant. But of course, being me, ever up for the challenge, I went from seminar to workshop to work that one out too. And a long time later, a quiet revelation snuck up on me one day and changed my life forever. We were sitting quietly and I had my eyes closed and we were asked to bring light, visualise light, coming down through my head and then up through my feet and infuse it into every part of my body, into our cells. And in that moment, I became light. I was light. I was love. I became the very thing I was looking for. There was nothing missing. There was nothing to fix. And there was nothing wrong with me. And the first meal that I ate after that situation was two poached eggs on a plate, on toast, rustic toast, with lots and lots and lots of butter. <laughs> and I ate them with deep pleasure and utter satisfaction. And I nourished my body for the first time in decades. See, most of us live in our bodies from the neck up, in our heads. But when we take the time to drop down and explore our bodies, a whole new universe opens up. So when asked, our intelligent bodies will show us what they want to eat, what perfume they want to wear, what skincare they love, what exercise will please them, who they want to lay with, and what clothes will nourish their curves. Advertisers and marketers simply lose their grip when we ask our body first. Because our bodies help us reclaim sovereignty over our choices, over our lives. And another thing I've learned about bodies, they're transmitters. They receive and transmit energy. They emit photons of light. And they give our intuition a landing place, a vehicle, a voice. So when we shun them, when we violate them, when we curse and control them, and that never-ending voice inside our head says, you're not good enough, go and pull your finger out now, fix it. Keep up, don't drop behind, and never, ever let yourself go. I'm here to say, let yourself go. <laughs> Get off the grid now. Swim the other way. Liberate your thighs, your furrowed brow, your grey hair. I dare you. Because it's time to be generous. It's time to be grateful, and it's time to be guided. For there is a place on this earth that you are to fill and no one else can fill. And you find it by letting go. And this is much more than just loving your body. We've got to inhabit them. We've got to live in ourselves. We've got to listen to them. We've got to tune into them to become one with them, to transmit light. To have the open-hearted courage to stand our ground and transmit the highest oscillation of love to shift the frequency for others, to literally light the way. So pause with me now. Drop down into your body. Feel its warm visceral hum and its slow rhythmic breath. And ask your body to show you what gives you joy. What makes you cry. What cracks open your heart. What makes you fearless? And what makes you shine? For that is the clue. For when the walls fall away and we embrace that cellulite and that warm, soft belly, something wondrous happens. Something glorious happens. We are liberated. We transform. We become real. 
and a radiance and luminosity we can't buy in a jar is released and we shine for our light has no resistance. The gorgeous revolution has begun. Our time starts now. Thank you.